Blaze Bodies! What's up, everyone? Here we are again. Well, this week I didn't put up a quote. I put up a picture, and it was it was to uh, pretty much just talk about my 33rd anniversary of the day that I went into the military. I went into the United States Marines. So today, I guess will be a fun, I want to tie it into fitness and nutrition somehow, but I, I first, I, I'll just tell you a funny story. I, I think years ago, I talked about the day, um, the day, <laughs> the whole day. It's an exciting day. It's scary. Uh, when they come pick you up and you and they take you down to Boston and you <laughs> but I'll, I'll just break it down a little I'll just condense it a little bit so it's not so long on here but the I signed up a year a little over a year early it's called the delayed entry program for you can I I don't know if they still do it I mean this is going back 30 something years but you I made the commitment by myself, I didn't tell my father. I was, I was 18 years old. I was an adult. I felt that I made that particular decision on my own. I went down to Lawrence, Massachusetts, where the recruiting station was. I rode my bike because uh, I, I, I lived on either I was either running, walking, or on a bike. I was always moving. Anyway, long story short, I went down there. I went in there and I went right up to the recruiter and I said, I want to go in to the Marines, All right? So, I, you know, fat, flat, fast, fast forward, I'm in high school. Now, when you're in the delayed entry program, you have to maintain, you have to graduate for one. I mean, so there's a lot, there's more commitment, early commitment for that matter. I make the initial commitment and then is the absolute accountability of maintaining a particular grades. And then, of course, you have to graduate high school so you can go into the military. So I did that. I, you know, I wasn't, I'm going to be honest, I wasn't the greatest student when I was in high school. I was more into working out and exercise and, you know, I like to draw. I'm an artist and all that. And, and I just, you know, I liked I like the social aspect of high school merely because I was so antisocial. I was using it as my own social experiment to get better at being social. But anyway, I went through, I, I maintained my grades. I went, got it all the way to, to graduation. I, I actually had some people say they were surprised they even graduated. But I made it, and I made it with C's and B's, and I was pretty proud of myself for doing that. And I was excited because I was going to go in the Marine Corps. And then that's, God damn, it was a scary thing to think of. Because back then, you know, that was considered to be the toughest. And I, that's, I, that's why I wanted to go in. That's why I made the commitment. I made an early commitment. I, had, I, st I kept myself accountable to particular responsibilities. And I made it to the commitment of graduating. And now I was making the commitment to going in. So I didn't go in right away because I, I wasn't going in until September. Graduated at the end of May, if I remember correctly. So I had that whole summer and uh, I worked still. I worked with my dad doing construction and I worked, uh, I worked, I was a shoe salesman of all things, a shoe stock boy at first, then a shoe salesman because I'm so OCD. They promoted me and uh, I worked up until literally probably about, I don't know, a month before I went in. So the day comes to go in. Now they come and pick you up in a little van. I, I talked about this years ago on, on, on a video, but they come pick you up with the little van. There's, I think there was about, I think there was like maybe 10 kids in the van, including myself. They had to go from each place to place to pick, you, pick up each kid. And they, uh, they got to me and then, you know, at that point I had already told my father, obviously two months before when I graduated high school and he was mad and he was upset that I didn't tell him, but then he understood. And 
So here it was that day I was leaving and he was, you know, my, just, my dad's a very sensitive guy. I love the guy to death and he was trying to hold back the tears and I'm hugging him and I, you know, we get in the van, we drive, you know, we got one more place to go. We got to pick up this one kid <laughs> in Lawrence and I'm not going to mention his name, but I, I, I mentioned this before. We, we got to his house, we pull up the van, the drill instructors jump out. And he, the, and he goes inside the house and then we're sitting there, you know, we, the, you know, at first this is, this is exciting to all us, you know, oh, going to the Marine Corps, this is great, you know, and then, you know, the, the fear hadn't, st hadn't sunk in yet. Now an hour goes by and this kid is, this kid won't, he didn't, he, he changed his mind. He was scared shit and he didn't want to go in. So the drill instructor ends up coming out an hour later. He's like, I can't get this guy. He's, he doesn't want to go. He's, I got I to gotta try. I got to keep trying. So he goes in and he, he finally convinces him. I don't know how he did it. He got the kid to come out, practically dragged the kid out in the van. And we, we headed off to Boston. Now, you get to Boston. And again, nothing's sunken in yet. It's still exciting. You're like, oh, I'm going to the Marine Corps. You see all the commercials on TV. Ah, you know, you, you, you think it's going to be fun, right? So you go through a long, lengthy, arduous process of, of processing physicals from every aspect, from head to toe. They, you can't have anything. Back then, you couldn't have anything wrong with you. Nothing. You couldn't even, I think, I don't even think you could have flat feet. I, I don't even know. Uh, but anyway, you go through all that and then you go through some administration stuff to determine what your MOS is going to be, your military occupational skill and all that. And when, when all that is done, a whole long day of that, you end up going in the room and you raise your hand and you, you, you all raise your hand and swear it on, it's, it's your allegiance and, and, uh, commitments and uh, service to our country and all officially. And then you're officially, now you're in. Now there's no getting out of it. <laughs> we didn't know it, but, but we could have gotten out of it. if we, Up until that point, if you, up to that pro day of going into Boston, you could back out. Because I had two guys back out who were supposed to go in under my name and that was gonna guarantee me a, a stripe. I was supposed to go in as a private. Uh, Private first class, rather, an E1. So now they you you they take they get us on a on a on a bus and we go to the airport and now we get to the airport we go through the process you know everything's all all you know the set the drill instructors not drill instructors but the Marines that got got us there get us through security and all that. And then there's, there's going to be like two or three layovers by the time we get down there. So we end up, you know, flying about an hour, an hour and a half to our first layover. And we get there and we're like, man, this is, this, this is nothing, man. This is, this is not scary. So we get to the first layover and there's one Marine, just one. He's just there hanging out, looking all Marine-like, you know, you know what I mean? Like serious, not saying a word. <laughs> so we're like, oh man, I don't know, this is kind of, this is getting real. So then we get on the plane, we go to our next layover, and <laughs> we get to the next layover. Now there's, there's like three Marines, and they don't look happy. They're not, <laughs> they're talking, and they're not happy. It was, now we're like, oh man, it's getting freaking real. So we go to the third one now and we get off the plane. We go, they, there's, there's like three or four Marines now waiting for us. And now they're yelling at us, get in that fucking room. We had to go in a room. They sat us all down. They started yelling at us like, like it was on. It like, we, we were like, oh, fuck. This is getting serious. They, they, we, they ended up like telling us to get on this bus that was outside. And that bus ride was only about an hour long, but it felt like three hours long. And then we drove to, we were in South Carolina. We had to drive 
onto Paris. If you're not familiar with Paris Island, there's only one causeway going in from the adjacent from the town that's outside, and it's around the causeway going in is just swampland. It's an island. There's no getting off the island when you're on. So, so we uh, we we're on that bus. It's dark out. You can't see. You we were scared as shit. No one's talking. We now we pull up and and you can see the front gate of of Paris Island opens up and we drive through and you can see the drill. You can see all the drill instructors all the way where the bus is gonna pull up, standing there, not saying a word. And now we're all, now we're there. I seen some grown men. Well, we were like 19, 18, 19 years old, scared shit and crying, right? We pull up and that front door opens to the bus and that was it, man. It was fucking on. That drill instructor, five of them started going batshit crazy, like coming on the bus, yelling at us, keeping people, were climbing out windows. They were scared. <laughs> I seen people pissing their pants. And then they make us all get off the bus, and then there's little yellow fit, fit, footprints on the concrete where they were all, all want us to stand on. So that's our first introduction to being what we call aligned and covered. We're in formation. And then from that second on, for the next three days nonstop, we were screamed at, yelled at. We had to go, you know, you go through a process of getting all your gear, haircuts, designation of where you're going to sleep. Three days of no sleep at all, getting yelled at and screamed at, drill instructors in your face, yelling at you, you can't do anything right. And it went on like that for 13 weeks nonstop. In fact, it got harder and harder and harder as it went. It was, it was in three phases when I was in, three different phases and each phase takes it up a notch. And, uh, you know, by the time you make it to third phase, you're like a machine. But uh, it was unreal. It was unreal. Back, it, back then, I don't know how things are now, but back then, it was fucking insane. And then when you make it to that day, because there were, we started out with 60 people. That, that moment we pulled up on the bus and we're all in the yellow footprints. And we ended up with a graduating class of 30, a 50% drop off. And, and what happens is when you get, you don't make it, this is different during those three phases, when you don't make it, they put you in another platoon from the beginning. They call it, you're a pickup. You're picked up by another platoon. And I seen that, I've people who couldn't make it physically, I seen, People who couldn't make it on the rifle range because every Marine has to be a badass rifleman. The lowest level rifleman in the Marine Corps is a badass in the, out in the world, right? And there's, three, there's three qualification uh, classifications. There's the sharpshooter, there's, there's marksman, sharpshooter, and expert. And marksman is like the lowest, and even that is badass. So... People who, who couldn't make it on that it ended up going into, into a, a, a separate rifle range detail. For They have to go through the whole process again just to get through that. And then there were people who just physically weren't couldn't handle it physically, which is, you know, back then it was very rare to see. Uh, it, we grew up. Myself, we grew up with a huge, huge, huge emphasis on fitness. So you very rarely saw someone who was out of shape. Not like nowadays where it's like nine out of ten people are out of shape and one person's in shape. So, you know, people who couldn't make it physically, had a, they got sent back. I seen people, one kid try to escape and they had a court martial. I don't know if you know what that is, but that's like 
when you're in the military, you they have their own court system, and this kid ended up getting going up. They made us watch his trial, and then they ended up kicking him out on a dishonorable discharge. Now that goes on your record the rest of your life. He tried to escape. So, and then there were people who had lied on about doing drugs and other things they shouldn't have had been doing, but they didn't say anything until it was that week of graduation, and then they said, ah, psych, you're going back to day one. Craziness, 13 weeks of craziness or longer if you're one of those people. So that was 33 years ago. And it was unreal. I ended up myself, I won't go into the details of it, but I ended up being the honor graduate of my platoon. I was like the valedictorian if you were in college of your of your graduating class. There were four platoons and my particular platoon, I got to wear the dress blue uniforms like you see on TV and meet all the, the, the generals ahead of time and before graduation day. And I was, I was the guy who carried the flag and all that. So it was a really proud day for me. And that was so long ago, but it feels like yesterday. So if I have to make, attach a, uh, something to this video in, in regards to uh, fitness and, and, and all that, I would say it's all about commitment and accountability. You got to make the commitment knowing how shitty and scary and hard things it will be in the journey. You make the commitment and get through to the other side. You know, like just like all those Spartan races you see and Tough Mudder runs and craziness. Or I'm just using that as an example. Everyone knows how crazy it is. But they do it anyway. They make the commitment and they don't quit halfway through. They go through all that shittiness to get to the other side and then it makes it worth it. So uh, that's it. And this is probably the longest video I've done. So I hope you stuck with me the whole time. And uh, all I got to say is Semper Fidelis to all my fellow jarheads and uh, to all you for that matter. Semper Fidelis Marine Corps motto means always faithful. So you all need to stay faithful to whatever you're out to achieve. All right, I'm going to leave it at that. I hope you're all doing well. And I'll see you guys very soon. And oh, yeah. Get to the gym!